this uh, educational tape is for soldiers uh, to understand the medications that are used in the treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder. Let me say that the best medicine is the least amount of medicine that's necessary. And ideally, the, the best course of action would be to take no medication at all. But if the suffering is severe, we have many different medicines that we can use to help you in a variety of ways. Let me start off with the use of antidepressants. Antidepressants uh, are, medication, are medications that make you think, well, gee, this will help me if I'm depressed, but if I'm not depressed, why am I taking it? Many soldiers are depressed without knowing it, but antidepressants are maybe better uh, for, for anxiety than they are for, uh, for depression. So we're primarily treating your anxiety disorder, and PTSD is an anxiety disorder with medications that we call antidepressants. The one that I use most often is called Lexapro. There are others that precede it and other doctors use with the same kind of success antidepressants such as Zoloft or Paxil or Prozac or Celexa or Wellbutrin. Those are the most common ones. Uh, the doses are, are going to be relative to your own unique chemistry. So we usually start off with a low dose and go slow in elevating the dose as needed. There's another antidepressant that we use frequently, not for anxiety or depression, but for sleep. And this is called trazodone. Trazodone is an old-fashioned uh, antidepressant, and it takes uh, about 300 milligrams to work for depression. We find that about 50 milligrams, sometimes up to 100 or 150, an hour or so before bedtime is very effective in helping soldiers with PTSD to fall asleep and to stay asleep. We're using it in that case for its side effect. The side effect is making you sleepy. All right, so I usually begin with a severely ill uh, soldier with PTSD with, uh, with Lexapro, as I said. Uh, if they're also already on a medication like Zoloft, I keep them on that medication. And I do a medication check each time I see them. Uh, in individual therapy. The other question that comes up is, uh, Doctor, do you have something that will help me sleep? Uh, this is a problem because sleeping medications are very effective but should not be used more than a short period of time, often two to four weeks, let's say. Ambien, A-M-B-I-N, is one of the most common hypnotics, we call them, or sleeping pills. It's pretty good to help you fall asleep but I compare it to a nine mil millimeter pistol. It's, it's, a, it's a small weapon. It's not like the heavy duty weapons that we have that would be equivalent to a 50 caliber gun that you'd have on a gun truck. But if a soldier's having trouble falling asleep but can stay asleep once they fall asleep, we'll try Ambien for a while. Now, there's a couple of tricks about Ambien that you need to be aware of. You need to take it and go right to bed. If you take it and do not go right to bed, you may have total amnesia for everything you did after you took it without going to bed. So I suggest that you have a glass of water beside your bed, have the one pill there, and take it when you go to bed. Now, a lot of soldiers don't sleep and don't want to sleep because they are terribly disturbed by the realistic nightmares. And the nightmares are almost always involving what happened in combat although the changes occur there may sometimes include family members being in combat with them. Especially we see this when soldiers are getting ready to go home uh, or come off of active duty and they're making the transition and they're bringing the combat home with them by bringing family members into their nightmares. Now we have a medication that's very effective for nightmares in most cases. It's called Prazosin, P-R-A-Z-O-S-I-N. Now that is a anti-hypertensive medication. That is, it causes your blood pressure to fall. So we start off with one milligram, and every four or five days, or maybe to make it simple, every week, you go up by one milligram, being careful not to get dizzy and pass out from standing up too quick and your blood pressure dropping. 
It turns out that for the average soldier with PTSD, you might have to take as much as 9, 10, 15, sometimes 20 milligrams of this, building up very, very slowly, and when you stop it, coming down slowly. Now, let me say, when you stop the antidepressants, it's extremely important to discontinue them in a stepwise fashion. There is a significant uh, reaction to stopping medications abruptly. In the case of antidepressants, it's called discontinuation syndrome. It may make you feel like you've got the flu, and it will also make you very irritable. I had a soldier not long ago who came home and, surprising to himself and his family, uh, immediately put, pinned her up against the wall. Fortunately, he did not injure her, but he scared her severely, scared his children, and he didn't understand why. And he told me what happened later. When I asked him about the medication, he said, oh, he stopped his medicine abruptly two or three days before this. I had another man uh, who got drunk after stopping his Lexapro for two or three days, and he pulled a gun on his wife. Now, this is, of course, very dangerous. Fortunately, no one is hurt again, but... Um, the idea here is that you cannot mix these kinds of medications with alcohol, and you cannot stop them abruptly. And in many cases, you cannot start them at the dose that you need to work up to. In the case of antidepressants, it might take two to six weeks before they become effective, so don't be discouraged in having to wait for the good results. Now, we don't like to use tranquilizers because they are habit-forming. A lot of my soldiers do drink, and they've learned that drinking alcohol is one way to stop their nightmares. The reason it stops nightmares is because alcohol destroys REM sleep, or rapid eye movement sleep, and that's when the dreaming most often occurs. And so, if you're taking medication of this type, of the types I'm talking to you about now, you must not drink alcohol. You're inviting several major problems, one of which is you're minimizing the effectiveness of the medication. Now, <clears throat> a lot of soldiers feel that uh, taking medication is a weakness. And they can take an antibiotic if they need it. Or if they had pneumonia, they would not hesitate to take what the doctor tells them to do, to take. But sometimes, and this is disappointing, if I order one month's supply of medication for a soldier, and he comes back and Let's say I might see him several times, and let's say three months go by, and he has not picked up, picked up any refills. I'll know that he's not taking the medication like he should. This medication only works if you take it every day as prescribed. Now, Benjamin Franklin said the first job of a good doctor is to teach his patients not to take medication. So just as soon as you can come off the medication with the advice of your prescribing physician, that's what we want to do. We don't want you on medication for the rest of your life. Severely disturbed soldiers with PTSD. As in the case of one man who came to me and said, I haven't slept in three months. They may require a strong medication, such as Seroquel, S-E-R-O-Q-U-E-L. This is an antipsychotic medication. It's used for people who've lost contact with reality, such as a schizophrenic person but they take 600 to 800 milligrams. And it's been found that 25 to 50, sometimes 100 milligrams of Seroquel will make the most disturbed PTSD soldier sleep like a baby through the night. Unfortunately, the next day, especially in the beginning, and if the dose was too high, they'll have a lot of trouble functioning because they're still very, very sleepy and feel drugged. This wears off, and the way to avoid this is to start with the lowest dose that is acceptable and gradually build up. By and large, there have only been two medications approved by the FDA for PTSD, and both of those are what we call SSRIs, Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors. It seems like serotonin is one of the, one of the chemicals in the body that will help calm down the overactive mind, especially the, the part having to do with the emergency response to stress. I use medication sparingly, sometimes as a last resort, and the main therapy is the relationship therapy, the attachment kind of therapy 
that I've talked to you about in other tapes. Uh, if you have questions about your medications, be sure to ask me or your prescribing physician. Um, and I think what I've covered so far is what most providers in most military treatment centers would use for soldiers with PTSD.